Okay, <clears throat> welcome to Esoteric Lectures. Today we're going to be discussing the uh, Femi Sapien. And um, basically we have been looking into Paul Affley's work. Uh, we've been looking into the Antichrist. Um, we've also been looking into the transsexual phenomena that's been occurring in the United States and around the world. And what we begin to start to find with all of this is that there is a lot of connections here that are obviously, pardon me, occultic and tie into what we're going to talk about today with the Femi Sapien, how this ties into transsexualism, um, also how this ties into the phenomenon of the Me Too movement and why men now are being targeted in this society more than ever is due to these things that we're going to discuss today. With that being said, the first thing we want to go over today is Merlena Schiappa. Now, on my personal channel, if any of you guys know about it, my Element X channel, um, I made a video talking about Merlena Schiappa. And I mentioned an article from her, from this article that they posted, talking about how she was um, <clears throat> wanting to find men for catcalling. And Johnny and I discussed this here on this channel um, a couple podcasts back of this phenomenon of finding men for catcalling in Europe and particularly in France. Merlana Schiappa uh, is the head counselor or chancellor of the quality of men and women, which is just, you know, I made the allegory to that, that that's straight out of 1984, which would be like the anti-sex league. So let's let's kind of get into that. Let's you know let's see what's going on here with that. So, Johnny, we mentioned that Merlena Schiappa was trying to find men for catcalling, and that she was going to enforce this in France. Now, I'm not sure if this is actually a. I don't think it's a thing yet, but it is something that they're trying to push right now in France and in Europe. So, Johnny, you know, like I said, we talked about this and we started to see, you know, you're the first one to bring this up, that this was a phenomenon that was beginning to occur. And this was right around the time that we were discussing the Lithian Age, I think. You know, what do you see as some of the consequences of what something like this could end up being for all of Europe? Where do you see an agenda like this beginning to move forward, you know, where, where, where do you see this going? Hi, everyone. I'm Johnny Midnight. Uh, yeah, Element, the um, Marlena Schiapp is actually the Minister of the uh, Equality for Men and w Between Men and Women. Um, what, what she's the what she's trying to do is propose legislature to create um, Cap calling as a finable offense. Um, they're talking, I guess, it would be about four hundred and fifty American dollars if uh, you know, you know the uh, the euro equivalent of that. If you are caught cat calling, and what the, the the legislature is trying to do right now is define exactly what cat calling is. Marlena wants it to be a very broad term. Meaning, asking for a phone number, following too close, following for too long, standing too close to a woman, maybe even doing things like speaking when not spoken to. <laughs> that's uh, ridiculous. That's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. 
and and they are trying to get that definition solidified you know, to to be uh, promulgated by fe sometime in February, a couple of, you know, uh, sometime you know within a month um, before they can shovel this through uh, nationally, yeah, um, uh, under French law. And uh, Macron is is all for it. He's he's right behind her. I know. Macron is very much like the European version of uh, Justin Trudeau, you know, um, just a, a Mega Man Gina. And yeah. it, it, I, I was I was actually musing the other day as to, well, what if uh, Marine Le Pen had won? Would would she? <laughs> would Marlene Schiappa even have a job? I don't know. Yeah, uh, you know, Le Pen might have. Would, might have just gone, you know, along with it just as much as Macron would have, because you got to remember, Le Pen is a traditionalist, and uh, you know maybe she wants that kind of uh, uh, society too, uh, where women are overprotected. I know that um, many female uh, French icons like Catherine Deneuve and Laetitia Costa. Are against this, you know. They're 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 bringing up, um, you know, sensible uh, criticism, such as, uh, well, you know, how how will men and women ever be able to meet each other in the first place well, if you're going to prohibit that initial meeting through the possibility of legal action? That's the thing, you know. That's that is the one of the main things that I brought up was that I, you know, I mentioned how that tied into 1984 because in 1984, their whole deal was that they wanted to keep the separation between the sexes um, maintained because the ultimate end goal for that was to control the reproduction and control the reproductive um, aspects that the state of 1984 um, wanted to enforce. Also, you have this with Brave New World. You have the same instance in Brave New World with test tube babies, in which they could control and decide the fate of what um, the genetics, kind of like the movie Gattaca, um, we're trying to impose of <clears throat> you would have a series of, of different, uh, you know, uh, programmed uh, people. The alphas would rule. Then you would have alpha, data, beta, uh, epsilon, theta, gamma. Like you'd have all these different um, series of, of Greek nomenclature. Yeah. Yeah. These different series of, of programmed or. Um, designed people, genetically modified uh, individuals that all had a specific job. And it's interesting because we kind of reference that in the MGTOW community, we call somebody a beta. Um, and so there's a connection going on there from that book also in 1984 that we see going on today with similar, uh, as I said, I mentioned that People need to read that book because all of our social dynamics that are occurring come directly from, or I should say the social dynamics that come from those books uh, are being generated in our world today. So Merlena Schiappa is doing the same. She's just pushing the agenda forward. Um, now, if this does pass, which you know, at this point, it's really nothing surprising. It, it happens, and it, it, we saw this with the feminists. We saw this with Me Too movement now, um, that they'll push it, and they'll make it a thing in the public sphere. And more importantly, the people working behind the scenes trying to put this in the public sphere are obviously going to be the ones that enforce it. Um. We even have seen this on, I think, New York City subways. No manspreading. I mean, that is 
absurd. It's ridiculous. But all that that agenda is trying to do is enforce the new coming. You, you see, whenever you're changing a society to um, move towards a certain direction, you have to get the people to be uh, slowly adjusted to it, very much like the boiling of the frog analogy. You do it over a slow period of time, eventually people will begin to adjust to those new uh, social mores or, or social norms that they push over time. So that's what Merlana Schiappa is doing, basically. She's, you know, she's just one cog in, the, in this machine of people behind the scenes <clears throat> trying to slowly change the, the world and the social uh, norms towards this separation that we'll be discussing later on in the show today and how that ties into <clears throat> the you know agenda of the Femi Sapien and that sort of thing. Well, you know, also uh, one of the differences in Brave New World, you know, yes, uh, breeding and reproduction was curtailed, just like it was in 1984. <clears throat> now, in Brave New World, however, the act of sex and, and men and women um, engaging in that together was purely recreational. But yeah, it did depend on what class of person you were. Uh, you know, a uh, a garbage man in, in the, the Brave New World uh, landscape probably would never get to, you know, he'd come right out of the test tube, start cleaning up garbage, and that was all he was going to, you know, he never had that opportunity, okay? But say, I don't know, um, the systems analyst or something, higher higher up the food chain, uh, you know, according to them in that value, okay, in that value system, would be able to have all the free sex he wished to, uh, to engage in. With a 1984, though, only like 2%, you know, maybe 5% of that population was part of the outer party who, who did get to enjoy um, some of the fruits of society, where the top 2% was the inner party, right? They were mm -hmm. the ruling class, the, the capstone of the pyramid. Everybody else was a parole. Uh, you know, they spoke in duck speak, you know, and they, they, they were barely intelligible. And we and, do find that in our society today of um, what uh, a lot of the, the MGTOW people that are MGTOWs talk about this very uh, same thing of the uh, people that are the alphas or um, people that have money attract the opposite sex because based upon the social environment that they've constructed, that's what they want. They want people to uh, continuously reproduce with those that they have programmed, the alphas or the betas or whatever. They want people to continue that lineage. It's like a bloodline. And yeah. so the people that are a part of the inner party, just like in 1984, the state had to, for the lower paroles, the state had to um, basically sign off on whether or not, you know, it was okay for them to be in that. But if they were ever seen or shown to have any kind of uh, affectional um, uh, caring towards the opposite sex, then they would be, uh, I think, arrested for it. So it's all part of a hive system that they're trying to introduce and brainwash people with. And that's basically what Chiapa was, was that ties into what Chiapa is doing. Well, one thing that Chiapa is trying to also do and what they want to formulate along with this leg legislation package is uh, response teams to this uh, quote unquote special task forces that are uh, basically, <laughs> you know, meter readers. I don't even know if they're going to be voluntary. You know, if they're they're going to be volunteers, they're not going to be um, legitimate police officers or the gendarme, you know, uh, as they call them in France. But um, they're, they're, Basically, that would they're be like a 
Yeah, they're they're going to be snitches that are um, you know they they want somebody on every corner to monitor the male behavior with his with the fellow female foot traffic. Yeah, and just, even in that article that you would posted, they were saying, you know, how is this going to be enforced? We don't have enough money to have a police officer on every corner. Well. <laughs> That's where, you know, the, uh, the, the anti-sex league comes in. And those would be your feminists. I would imagine so. I'm sure there will be a lot of blue hairs out there more than happy to do this for free. Yeah. And so <clears throat> to surmise that up, she, that's what Shiap is up to, basically. You know, and that's <clears throat> the enforcers are the feminists. They're basically um, undercover spies for the the party and they're trying to get as many people recruited into that as they can, which is why they're pushing the propaganda now to enforce that. So they can continue as they can have <clears throat> as many agents or people enforcing it as, as they can um, all over the world by putting it into the school system, by putting it into the workforce and continuing that control. And so the feminists in 1984, the anti-sex league, you know, they are the enforcers to make sure that that doesn't go. God, imagine having to be in school in France right now. You're, you're a high school boy or a college uh, male, you know, uh, you know, it, it, if some type of triggly puff sitting in your classroom sees you, you know, speaking to another female without express permission written in triplicate and signed and dated, you know, it's just hell. It's oh yeah. Hellish. I want to talk about Paul Affley, Paul Affley. And this is where we begin to get into the topic for today's show. Um, Paul Affley did a artwork piece called the sexuality of robots, which we had basically decided we needed to do a show about this because it was very important that we have people understand that the whole dynamic here of what's going on with that piece that he did ties into artificial intelligence. It ties, in, it ties into robots. Uh, it ties into um, the occultic and the Gnostic um, information pertaining to a higher thing going on here. So, Johnny, why don't you give people kind of a, a rundown of Paul Affley, like just a, a brief summation. Okay, uh, Paul Affley is a Boston painter, uh, initially a trained as an architect. And um, to let you know, he was one of the uh, original design teams of the World Trade Center. Yeah, that the World Trade Center. Um, this was back in the early 70s. Uh, the firm under which he was working, I think it was like his first job out of graduate school, he um, had proposed to construct seven bridges between the two towers in the event of an emergency. If uh, one of the towers was, say, on fire, you could go through the, um, the, 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 the bridges and go into... And, and moved to safety to the other tower. And there he was promptly fired. <laughs> he was fired from the team uh, for, for um, proposing that uh, design. Anyway, um, later on, he decided to just become a fine artist. Uh, he decided to, you know, ditch the um, architecture business and he would create immense, sometimes close to 10 foot tall uh, paintings, usually done in acrylic, but he would also use uh, mixed media like Letraset uh, typography and ink, pen and ink, um, uh, different types of, uh, you know, charcoals. And um, he would make these photorealistic infographics long, long before the infographic craze that you would see on the internet, long, you know, long before the World Wide Web came into being. And he'd been doing this uh, since the, the 1970s. He did go through many metaphysical uh, experiences, and he is a, a self-professed uh, Gnostic 
and uh, his work will show it if you, you see any of it. Well, we'll have uh, links to it, some in the low bar. One of his canvases is called The Sexuality of Robots. It was one of his, you know, well, one of his final pieces that he had um, ever uh, composed. And that is the subject, uh, that's, that's the piece that we're going to be speaking to you uh, people about tonight. And it features an entity known as the Femi Sapien. Now, the Femi Sapien, I just found out, is actually a robotic toy that was... Uh, yeah, it is. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's um, available in Japan. It's actually pretty advanced for what it does uh, uh, when it came out anyway. But in this in this uh, canvas of, of, of Lothalese, he... Um, is equating this entity of the Femme Sapien as a figurehead of rulerhood. And that's where you could take that away element. Yeah. Um, Johnny and I, after we had basically made that, you know, discovery, uh, we began to start we started to look into a little bit more of the occultic esoteric reasons behind what this could be that's why um we started to look at hr giger's work um and hr giger of course drew a picture of the baphomet in which <clears throat> johnny and i were looking at this picture and we said well that thing is very, you know, it, it's it's telling a lot of what the higher, in terms of the Gnostic understanding of it, the higher story of what is taking place here um, in the Corposa, which is the place we reside in, basically. Um, and one thing that we had discovered, or one thing that we had taken serious note of, is the fact that when you look at a picture when you look at this picture that i will uh put into the edit <clears throat> you see obviously a woman at the top of the baphomet's head that woman is lilith and the reason why and i'll throw this to you johnny because i think you you also wanted to to break it down as well that the woman in this in the gnostic understanding or the gnostic perspective what I believe has happened, especially why we mentioned the things going on with Chiapa and this big separation between the sexes that we see in <clears throat> 1984 and in Brave New World and in our world now currently, there's a great separation. I believe that the purpose for this and a higher understanding is how, number one, we've mentioned Jehovah. <clears throat> which we understand is basically the devil. He is the person that, from the Gnostic understanding, created the world we now live in. His wife is Lilith. Originally, they were together, henceforth the Androgyne. And because there was like, you know, the best way I can describe it is there was a divorce that happened. There was a separation between man and woman in a sense, a separation between Jehovah and his wife, Lilith. Originally, they were a thing. They were a thing. They were androgynous. Because of that separation, there was the emulation of man and woman, a divide. So in our world, there's the divide between man and woman. And that is why there's this constant, I believe that on a higher level, there's a constant struggle between the sexes because of the grander story of what happened between Jehovah and Lilith. What do you think, Johnny? Oh, um, yeah, absolutely. And this, this painting of uh, H.R. Giger uh, depicts this, uh, this cycle of, uh, uh, perfectly. Um, at the top, you have, of the Baphomet, you have Lilith, who is um, giving birth to the Numa, our, our souls, and in putting them into the Baphomet. Now, the Baphomet is, I guess, what you could consider a holistic central processing unit, okay? Um, and even it, 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 
its binary code is even depicted in this painting. Uh, it's pointing up for one, pointing down for zero. Um, in the middle are the is uh, an infinity symbol, which is representing the uh, eternal process of respawning of re of rest smith of how the um the body will will die and then respawn back into the baphomet and then once again the human will become manifest into the corpusa the prime material reality in which we live right now over and over and over again also when you um, look at the when you look at the image um, I'm looking at it now. When you see the woman at the top, she makes the star on the left. And an inverted pentagram makes the Baphomet on the right. So, like, the inverted pentagram is Jehovah. The upward pentagram is Lilith. Yeah, that that is what I would uh, surmise as well. It's very interesting that... We see this picture that H.R. Giger drew. And obviously, he was connected into something. Otherwise, the knowledge that he got disseminated to him um, to make this drawing is pretty remarkable, if you ask me. Yeah, I believe Giger was a theosophist, uh, very much like uh, Madame Blavatsky or um, Aleister Crowley. Aleister Crowley had his own sect of Gnosticism called the, um, the Golden Dawn or also known as the OTO, but um, they they ha held similar types of belief. Uh, the pop, uh, the you know, the popular uh, media scene uh, branded him a Satanist, which, uh, you know, uh, maybe he did dabble in, in some of that kind of uh, philosophy, but for the most part, um, I would say, uh, you know, he was a theosophist. Yeah, and... So, I look at these this drawing that H.R. Giger drew, and the things that Johnny have we have talked about. You know, I believe that is the one of the main reasons why we have this big separation between the sexes is because there was a separation between Jehovah and Lilith. They used to be an androgynous being, perhaps. And because of the separation of what Johnny was saying, the binary code, one being the man, zero being the woman, a separation occurred, and that separation carried itself into the lower realms because they exist in the realms above ours, as above, so below. So and you have to, yeah, you have to remember that we here in the prime material reality are the lower realms. And if you want to, um, you know, look at the traditional sense of hell being below us. Well, that's that's not right. It's actually above us. Yeah, I would agree. And just as you have in a corporation, you have bosses that are on the floors above you, things that go in the, uh, you know, executive offices above get disseminated below. You know, the orders from above affect the worlds below, the offices below. So, because that separation, I believe, perhaps the separation of Jehovah and Lilith happened, that is why we see the separate sexes of man and woman, and why there is in this world a uh, constant um, struggle, a power struggle to keep the separation. And also, because we see this in this perspective that what happens above also happens below, then the original aspects of what's happening above are the executive offices. The, the, uh, it's where the decision is made that happens below. So whatever is going on up there, we're seeing the aftermath that is manifesting below here. Well, from a Gnostic perspective, and if you do read the Gnostic or also known as the priestly version of the book of Genesis, um, you're not going to find this in the King James Version, okay? Um, you'll learn that prior to Adam and Eve, Adam, when he was created out of what they called clay um, by Jehovah, was fused with an aspect of Lilith, okay? They were, um, they were an androgyne, 
they were they were stuck together that entire society at the beginning was androgynous and now how yeah i mean how they reproduced with if it was through parthenogenesis or what i don't know we were different though we were not the separate genders of man and woman uh and of course apache tack helicopter <laughs> that we are today <laughs> um According, like I said, to the Gnostic version of Genesis, Adam's first wife was an aspect of Lilith. Um, so I guess what was happening was Jehovah was, decided to make his own creation, which is us, in his own image. So I guess he figured, well, you know, I'm, I'm going to bring my wife Lilith into it, and we're going to go and put both aspects into one life form and humanity was a fusion of male and female until the um aspect of lilith wanted to take control over the aspect of adam adam wasn't having that he said to jehovah i want a divorce <laughs> <laughs> I'm exactly. sick of this shit. Get her out of off of me, right? Um, and Jehovah relented. He was he he was uh, prideful, and he said, "Well, you know, I I I, I guess I really m messed up. Um, I'm I'm not very good at this video game. Um, let's reboot it, and uh, we'll separate man and woman. And then there comes Adam and Eve. Yes, just like a." Just like a cell divides, the division of the machine got divided into two parts, just kind of like you see the representation of that in the body with the two hemispheres of the brain, the male side, the female side, the red side, the blue side, etc. Um, another way of looking at this is like what Johnny was saying, um, a reboot happened. In other words, Jehovah and Lilith wanted a divorce. So... The grand machine got separated into two different part, two different cycles, basically one ruled by man and one ruled by woman. And the end result of this is that, and, and this ties into the main point of the Femi Sapien. This ties into the aspects of the Me Too movement. This ties into feminism. This ties into the revolt of the sexes that we're seeing a lot now in the news. Is that Think of it like this. Jehovah and Lilith both have a video game they like to play. One aspect of it is that Jehovah gets to play for six different cycles. Or, in other words, he gets to play for six hours in his time. The six cycles would represent half of the, like, for example, the 12 signs of the Zodiac. He gets to play with half of that, and Lilith gets to play with the other half. What I believe is happening with these revolts that we're seeing, as well as I think with the transsexual phenomenon and the uh, bl merging of the two sexes, that is another thing that I'll get into in just a moment. But sticking on this note, Lilith is now beginning to, in other words, Jehovah's time is running out on the game. And now it's going to be Lilith's turn because it's like a divorce they get to play with half and once his time's up then she gets to get half and that's how this place has always been so the manifestations on the higher realm realms of that working are the side effects of that happening now with things like the me too movement and feminism so i guess what you're saying is um we're um going to get to go visit mom this weekend huh <laughs> <laughs> pretty much yeah. yep yeah, basically, I think that that is the deal with the you know stuff we're seeing now. Mom's going to get to reboot the machine with a bunch of zeros instead of a bunch of ones. <laughs> right, right, exactly. And um, you know, I I think it was last episode of ours. I was asking and positing the question: you know, Are are we going to even be calling God Him a hundred years from now? You know, uh, are we going to be referring to God as she uh, in the next 
you know, during this next age, whenever, whenever that may come to fruit, come to solidify when, when the calendar is no longer on Domini, Okay. It's, or uh, it's, it's going to be a new era, a new age. And we, we have year one, you know, Anno Lilithio or something. I find it in, well, in a lot of respects, they, the new age community and all those freaking people have been pushing the concept of Gaia and, and the Mother Earth. But not deodorant. You know? <laughs> yeah. So, you know, they, they've been pushing that concept for quite some time. A lot of the New Age stuff is mainly centered around Mother Earth type of worship. Mother Earth is Lilith. Because she gives birth to the Earth because of what we were, you know, mentioning with the depiction of H.R. Giger's work and what Johnny said, the Lilith gives birth to the Numa of this realm. And so, you know, the New Age community has talked a lot about this and they've been pushing this kind of stuff. Also, you look at Egypt, a um, lot of goddesses and a lot of goddess worship. You have to understand that the Egyptians is just, you know, Nothing more, just as in the U.S. presidents, there's a man and there's a woman. And that was also of a different age. That was an age prior to ours. That was not the age of Pisces. Right. And so we see this constant dynamic between man and woman, Jehovah and Lilith, just in our world. We have man and woman here, represented Jehovah and Lilith as above, so below. So... Lilith or mom is going to get to play her side of the cycle now. And that's why we're seeing this up, up revolting of women, women wanting to play the part of man. Um, you know, and also this is another thing that ties into the transsexual phenomenon. And Johnny, I'm going to throw this to you because you brought this up and I thought it was worth noting that you mentioned that, it is a possibility that it could be that they're trying to unify the both just before the division happens so that there can there can be this in other words there's kind of like a door that got opened in the prison system once they okay. close that door or the unification becomes one and one there there can no longer be ascension because there's no division or there's no um, multiplying uh, like a like a cell dividing it can create more well, right. I, I, yeah, go on ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's just uh, the divisions of the cells. Once they divide, they multiply more. But if you put all, if you just keep one centered, then you can control that versus a thousand. What do you think? It's possible. I think that maybe there might be uh, too many souls, for lack of a better word, or spirits that are ascending and um, um, leaving the um holistic core you know prime material connection that that eternal uh, resmith respawning of um of numa to um to human matter um and in order to ensure that that uh, doesn't happen anymore they they have to get rid of the free will Okay, like what Element and I are doing right now, and, and, and many of you who do make your own podcast, you're exerting your free will um, as, as best as you, you can. And um, this, this type of study won't, won't even be possible in the next stage. I think, unfortunately, that's the case, which is a great segue into discussing what you and I might think the side effects of something of this mom ruling would be. Um, number one, we see that obviously, as I've mentioned, the transsexual phenomenon, where I think possibly the future of mom and this Femi Sapien, the Femi Sapien is, can be equated to, if anybody has ever seen the movie Metropolis, you had a female robot. We also see a female robot beginning to take a lot of note called Sophia. We see that connection there, which is interesting. And Paul Affley's work talked about this. In other words, the Femi Sapien is Lilith. It's just the way that Paul Laffley, I believe, decided to depict it was through a robot. 
because of the cybernetic kind of um, non-living infusion. Jehovah kind of represents the living in a sense, or, or maybe vice versa, maybe because Lilith creates the Numa, she's the living, you know, you, you could break this down into multiplicity, but I believe the end, the end point here is that the Femi Sapien is Lilith. So, Johnny, what do you think we will our, our future will look like? I, I believe it'll be quite androgynous because of all the stuff they're pushing now. I think it will be as well. Um, I think that um, first of all, when we we talk about the Femi Sapien, the Femi Sapien is going to be a manifestation of the Baphomet right here on Earth. Um, uh, it is going to manage possibly a realm even below ours that we would be creating an artificial intelligence, but not just that, a, a complete simulacra uh, uh, of, of a world that's, you know, way beyond something like World of Warcraft or Second Life or, 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 or the, the Sims. I'm, I'm talking about um, a world where we are further downloaded into this. Uh, realm of consciousness and um, before that comes to fruition before that becomes just uh, the the state of the nation we will I think people will begin adopting more and more transgendered or, or uh, you know multi-gendered uh, aspects into their appearances, um, not even not even just cosmetically, but maybe even physically. Well, another thing that just struck me was the human the human body is a micro version of the Baphomet. The man represents the one side of the computer being the one, and the woman represents the other. So there's an infusion between two sides of the computer. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> I gotta write That's that down. crazy. That is I'm, not. That, <laughs> that just kind of struck me because. Well, you got to have one, one and the other for it to operate. Exactly. So the transsexual thing could be the two sides of the computer coming together. I'm not sure. But that the one represents the one, meaning, you know, uh, the man and the zero is the woman. So the man represents half the computer. The woman represents the other half, just like a computer is made up of binary codes of ones and zeros. Just like the Baphomet is, and above that, the Metatron and the Plerima. And how does the human body operate? Like a computer. The mouth is the speaker, the brain is the central processing unit, the veins are the blood line, uh, the bus lines. And uh, your, bell, the your, your stomach is the hard drive. Uh, yeah, exactly. So, fractalization as above, so below. So, I believe that's another possibility of the transsexual phenomenon is that with the unification of two sides of the computer thus that emulates itself into our society with a hive mind because when you when a computer operates together it works like a hive everybody does the exact same thing they all have their purpose and that's why they in <sighs> brave new world they were they were calling them uh, delta beta gamma theta alpha those are programming stuff that's programming terminology that's right and i didn't even think about that right now and, and it not only explains the goal but also the motive of how to stanch the ability to have free will by being joined together like that <laughs> that's exactly why you can't have it because the, the the two are in constant competition with each other that's wow but well, yeah, that now, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, that's that's very interesting because when you have that aspect, that's you. You're right. That's how you keep control. If 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 you got two computers on a desk and one of them's doing one job and one of them's doing the other, you always have to keep going back and forth between the two. Right. There would have to be some sort of an interface between the two. Uh, say if like you're, you have an analog ca uh, keyboard and you're trying to plug it into a digital audio workstation, right? You're going to need a MIDI interface for the two to talk to each other. Well, what, what's the best way to control it? Get rid of the interface. Just put them to, together into one. And via 
chemical infusion via the alchemical infusion or the webbing of the two sides of the computer, man and woman, you get rid of the interface by mending them together. Perfect. Well, no, I don't like it, but <laughs> it's a perfect explanation. Well, I think that that just is a, I think another, because the thing is, once you understand that everything here is a mini version of the bigger picture up that's going on up there, just back engineer it. So if man and woman is the mini version or the fractalization of the Baphomet, yeah. man and woman, then through transsexual or the transfixing or the in transfusion, you complete the whole. And I don't even think it's, yeah, and I think maybe what will happen is that that transfusion of the two genders will eventually go even further on to the transfusion of the living and the unliving. And that there is the ultimate goal. That will keep you from ascension. Okay, so just like the how do we do that? Yeah, we, we we go not even you know we're below, but you know how how do you how do you make it even harder, more impossible? Well, or, or to make it impossible, that's poor grammar right there. Uh, go even further below. Why stop here in the corposa? Well, you you have the again the the as above so below playing itself out of what you were saying about them trying to. Um, basically download us even further into the system because once Jehovah's operating system becomes complete, yeah. so will our operating systems become complete with the infusion of the male and the female through transsexual androgyny. Thus, we begin to replicate further from that point forward. And we begin to download even further into a hive mind because a hive is nothing more than two parts of a computer working in unison of one and zero. Very much like, uh, say, a, a Unix kernel, which is all in, you know, represented in a honeycomb shape. Ever notice that? Also, the word Unix is very similar to the word eunuch, like androgynous. Right. And didn't you say that that... Uh, that the the Sophia computer that they're developing right now, this AI, is Unix based. I'm not sure. I, I don't know if I said that, but I, I need to look that up. Um, let me see what I can find really quick. Okay. I find that very interesting, though. That you know, the very very same aspects that are happening here is that the man and the woman is just the two sides of the computer, just like if you were to have two computers sitting on a desk, one of them is projecting an image of a woman and one of them is projecting an image of a man, but they're two separated situations. It's a holographic projection into a fake reality. There, it reminds me of a, a book or at least a movie that we have to um, eventually um, cover called A Scanner Darkly by uh, Philip K. Dick, yes. where the agent, Bob Archer, has taken a drug called substance D, also known as substance death, uh, you know, absolute death, right? Um, and the two sem hemispheres of his brain are competing with each other. And he, he, he's, he's starting to malfunction because he's, his brain, his mind is fractal, uh, fracturing. Um, and he, 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 you know, he's no longer going to be able to be controlled as an agent. It's exactly what we're talking about right now. In later episodes, uh, we will we'll cover this film and this book. Absolutely. We, we definitely will. Um, but on a, a final note for, for the Femi Sapien, um, what I believe is going on here is, is like I was saying, on an occultic perspective, there is the fact that I think one of two scenarios, either A, Lilith is going to get to play her system, which is now being manifested through the Me Too movement and all the sexual assault. I think also, on the other hand, it could be the infusion, as Johnny put, the infusion of, you know, the two uh, the divorce settlement kind of got reached and they want to get back together because they realize that um, 
things don't, things are not being too compatible with two two parts of the computer. The man and the woman need to be infused together in order to have complete control or have a hive mind where everything is unified. Henceforth, the Unix system, the unified system, is being completed. So basically, Jehovah and Lilith are going to give it another shot. I'm not sure, but it seems to be that, uh, <laughs> you know, with what we see in just the occultic information and the Gnostic viewpoints that we've been trying to understand here, it seems to be that there is that unification being manifested through this transsexual man and woman together through chemical infusion, alchemical infusion, and um, taken from the perspective of the computer and how everything is kind of the body is part of the computer because it's separated just as the one and zero. Um, it seems to be that they're trying to unify those two together and that's being shown now through transsexualism. Yeah, and it's it it really helps solidify the the aspect that you know, like you were you were illustrating earlier today uh, in 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 this chat that you know we are nothing but computers. We're we're making computers as human beings, but as human beings, we are, we too are computers from elsewhere. You know that are that have been designed from elsewhere. And this is another thing that, that just struck me as well. Um, <clears throat> something we haven't gotten too heavily into, which is the sodomistic aspect. When the people participate in sodomy, the two parts of the brain get connected. So they become part of that infusion. The two, basically, the two parts of the computer get infused because the right and the left side of the brain are the one and the zero. Yeah. It's the rainbow bridge. And from there on, you get that infinite feedback loop. Exactly. The the, re the the eternal respawning, where you you can't get out of that loop. You can't. You you no longer have the ability to formulate free will um, and have any kind of hope of breaking that type of cycle. You know that that's illustrated, say, in that Giger painting of the Baphomet. Very much kind of similar to, you know, the infinity being you know, the, the two parts of the brain connected to infuse a constant circuit or a cycle. Okay. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. There's, there's no circuit breaker here now. Yeah, get rid of that interface. So I think that's another reason why these people do that is because it, the two parts of the brain, you know, are um, basically unified. And uh, maybe that's why 9-11 happened. That's a whole other show. Uh, maybe it's uh, yeah, the implication of that. <laughs> but anyways, uh, we're running on our last uh, eight minutes here. Why don't we kind of surmise a few things for today? And um, Johnny, what do you think? Well, I'll tell you what I learned. Um, you know, in many ways, I, I learned the motive and the goal of the, the transgender agenda um, as to how it is that we, you know, they are trying to get rid of that type of interface uh, between the, the two genders. And, and by fusing the two, we would lose the ability for free will. The goal is control. That's the motive. And I agree. I, I really think that we, um, we, we kind of made some headway here with this because I, I do believe that is what, what is going on. Uh, occultically, Gnostically, and physically, and all the manifestations and the side effects that result of what happens when you have that uh, alchemical type of merging. Um, we're taking this from the perspective of a computer program. We're also taking this as the fractalization of the separation of the one and zero, the man and the woman, the right and the left side of the brain, infusion. So just as what Johnny said about uh, a scanner darkly, the guy took a, a drug that was conflicting both sides of his brain and fighting with one another because it was trying to infuse itself with one another. So, interesting. I Yeah, and it was a question that you and I, especially I, had been asking is, you know, what is the motive for this? Why are, you know, why is our society developing into this transgendered um, uh, manifestation of itself. Why is it going through this phase? What would be the motive? Because that's that's one thing that uh, anybody watching the show will will notice that I usually question the motive, and Element will question 
of the consequence. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I think I'm, I'm getting it now. I think I'm understanding um, why this is being put into play. And it seems inexorable. You know, it's like um, I was telling Veritech Ace in, in one of the comment sections, this, this is just nothing really we can do to stop it. You could protest all you want, but Marlena Schiappa will have her legislation. It will be made law. Yeah, the this the workings that are going on here are not just physical. It's beyond this dimension. <laughs> That's and right. We don't know very much about it. We're we're working on like old information here. We're working on like old manuals of how to use a Windows ninety eight. You know, so um, we're trying our best here. You know, we really are trying our best, and we're really trying to figure it out. And we are making good progress in the understanding of the result of where the society is going and and that's why in 1984 and brave new world the whole society as well as what we see moving towards a communistic world that's why they call it this whole thing the new world order the new world order is nothing more than the unification of two parts of the computer coming together because when the two parts of the computer come together you have a hive mind world that's why everybody in 1984 and in brave new world all were part of a hive system yeah, completely bereft of free will. And like I said, that is the goal. That's the consequence that we uh, that you you look for. Um, so what uh, what did you learn today? Well, that's one thing I definitely learned today that just struck me. You know, it's it's very interesting how when we do these shows, every now and then so I'll just be sitting on here talking and then boom, something happens. I'm like, Oh my gosh. It, yeah. Almost every show <laughs> it happens to us. So yeah. doing something right. Or, or something's happening that is helping us or whatever the situation is. Um, if, if we, you know, when I just sit here, it'll just come to me immediately. And I'm like, Oh, so that's what it is. And that's yeah. one thing I learned. Well, I think too, you know, um, a lot of our, um, study and research you know we bounce that back off of each other and we're able to compare notes not just here on the show but in the green room and get that kind of uh conclusion formed oftentimes oftentimes a new question arises because uh <laughs> well was found out so now you got to find out the others exactly that's usually how it works <laughs> It's called well, problem solving. <laughs> yeah, and it takes time, but we're getting there. And I think that's one. I think we we might have solved uh, one piece of that puzzle of of another thing that's that's going on in this world, and why we're seeing the things happening now, um, in this world uh, beginning to show itself. So, uh, Johnny, is there anything else you want to say before I uh, close it out today? No, I just wanted to say thanks for tuning in. I'm Johnny Midnight, and I want you to have a good midnight. And thank you for tuning in, and we will be back again soon.